Hello everyone! In this video we are going to talk about shock response spectrum vibration tests, its usage and setup in ruler test up software. Let's start with theoretical basics. Shock response spectrum is used to characterize the frequency response of shock environment to estimate the maximum dynamic response of structures. SRS can be used to characterize such events like earthquakes, pyroshocks, and underwater explosions. Shock response spectrum is usually used for transient event description in general terms, damage potential estimation, and of course structural design and research. SRS vibration test can be used in such fields like aerospace engineering, earthquake engineering, and transportation tests. Main SRS principle is based on representation of time domain data in the frequency domain. SRS models waveforms response channels using a set of theoretical single degree of freedom mass damper spring oscillators. The horizontal axis of the plot represents the natural frequency of each single degree of freedom. The theoretical response of each single degree of freedom is plotted on the vertical axis. It is important to note that SRS is not an actual response of an object under test, but only a theoretical representation of the response. So now let's continue in test up. We open SRS test and create a new test. In the first tab we enter our SRS table. We will have the really simple profile, so we add the starting frequency as 100 Hz and frequency as 2000 Hz, and the amplitude will be 2G. Also on the right side you can see a button which can adaptively select a parameter and recommend a value for slope, amplitude and so on. Our next tab is called SRS parameters. Here we will need to fill two settings groups. Let's start with analysis parameters. Our first step is to set a value for damping factor or a Q factor for our shock. Damping factor characterizes the speed of amplitude decreased during the shock, and the Q factor the waveform sharpness and its quality. After that we need to select the synthesis type. We have an octave series, wavelet frequencies, SRS frequencies, and a linear step. If we select the first option, we will have to enter all the settings below, like millisteady standard, start and end frequencies for the synthesis, and the part of an octave to analyze. The second option will take the frequencies from wavelet tab, and the third option will use frequencies from the profile tab, and our final option allows you to select a linear frequency step for analysis. After that we enter synthesis parameters. We need to select the wavelet type. So you see that we have a lot of options here. After that we enter the pulse duration. According to the selected millisteady standard we can enter TE lower or TE upper where TE lower is the effective shock duration and TE upper is the minimum length of time that contains all time history magnitudes exceeding in absolute value one third of the shock peak magnitude absolute value. After that we press synthesize and see the resulted signal. Also we can add more synthesis iterations. On the wavelets tab you can change and edit generated wavelets, recalculate spectrum and generate more iterations of synthesis. Then we go to schedule and enter the desired shock number. Here we can also change the level, period between the shocks and also invert the shock. We can also enable the manual mode here. In the control tab we will leave the main settings by default, but I will explain some additional features. Use saved FRF option can be used to improve the startup speed of your test if you are running the series of identical tests using the same equipment. Single shock option increases the startup time, but in this case the system won't do any shocks during the startup. Also you can set the initial drive value which will be used during the startup, but you should know this value and be really careful with this parameter. After that in the limits tab we select the shaker and go to channels tab. Here we check the configuration, and now we are ready to start the test.
That's all for today. I hope you learned something new from this video. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to our channel and press the like button. It will help us to make more videos for the channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.